Luke chapter 15 is one of my favorite chapters in all of the Gospels. It has the most incredible parables, which for those of you that are watching with the family, I will have to ask the kids, what is a parable? It is an earthly story with the heavenly meaning. I get so excited about these ones because they are what I at least call the lost parables. It's the parable of the lost sheep. It's the parable of the lost coin. And it's that very famous parable, the parable of the prodigal son. And this entire chapter is all about Jesus redeeming people. And it's a great reminder and a great challenge that our redemption is kind of in spite of us. The big theme of this chapter is best read in verse 7. So as you read this chapter, man, pay attention to all of it because it's so fantastic. But pay extra close attention to verse 7. It's just so incredible. And verse 7 tells us the big idea, the big theme, the central message of all these parables. And it is just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven, more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents and over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Man, it's incredible. And to, to give us the big idea of, of this passage as you read it, that there's more rejoicing over the one sinner that repents than the 99 that didn't need to repent. There's more joy over that. We need to understand that Jesus has just been challenged by the Pharisees when they say, what is the deal, Jesus? You eat with sinners. So the big idea is that Jesus redeems that which we declare unredeemable. I want to say that Jesus redeems sinners. But what's amazing about Jesus saying, look, I've come for these sinners, is that we're all sinners. So sometimes we may forget that. Sometimes we look and, and, and think, Man, that, that person may be too far gone. No, Jesus is saying, mm -mm, no, not at all. I'm here to redeem everybody. I'm here for everyone. And it, just, it gets me so excited because Jesus is, is saying, listen, I'm rejoicing over that one person who gets it, that they're a sinner and they need God. So it's not that these sinners are, are, are so much worthy of so much more worthy of praise or, or so much better. It's that these sinners get it. They know who they are before God, and they're willing to, to humble themselves before him. Jesus redeems that which we declare unredeemable. Jesus redeems the unredeemable. That's the big idea of this passage, and that's the, the challenge and reminder for us, those of us that identify with the, the brother and the prodigal son, where we say, man, I've been home. We need to remember that Jesus redeems the unredeemable. So the big question here is, do we understand fully our place before God and our need for him and his grace? And two, are we shouting and rejoicing and joining in the celebration of the angels in heaven over that one repentant sinner when they come?